You straight up cuckooed that dude, bro. Oh my god. You've got all your Charger gear on because I'm feeling fresh as hell. Well, you guys better enjoy it. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move, and throws, and touchdown! Players, coaches, staff, fans, together, we can create something truly special. Stay tuned for some good content. Good morning to you all. Welcome back to the Charger Chat. I'm your co-host, Wooldog, sitting with my buddy, Kev Huggin' Duggin. We got a Raider game here pretty quick. It's oh, it's Raider sad. week. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. But let's not forget how the coach dug in. Howdy ho, good neighbors. You guys ever feel <laughs> like Brady Bunch sometimes? Yeah. With these squares? Yeah, I feel like the dad and you're my little girls. <laughs> uh, no, you're like the maid. <laughs> <laughs> you just clean everything up. <laughs> I'm here for cleanup and yeah. make sure you guys get for the shit cleanup. on time. Yeah, yeah. cleanup crew. Yeah, yeah. always enough. good for a little one liner to take us <laughs> take us to sassy, commercial. Yeah, the sassy maid. That's what Kevin is. <laughs> Our sassy maid. Hey, I'll take it. She was a good part. Um. All right, folks. Well, lots to talk about this episode. Uh, some accolades to give out to some of our players. Uh, it's Raider week, so we've got that to look forward to. So, family trust, respect. Family, family trust, trust respect. respect. Uh, we've got a coach's corner lined up and a Craig experience. Uh, yeah. So let's just get right into it. Uh, those that were watching this last game, uh, they mentioned it during the game that Justin Herbert has reached uh, second, I guess, in most touchdown passes in the first three seasons. Second only to Dan Marino, who has 98 to Justin Herbert's 88. Uh, he passed Andrew Luck and Peyton Manning his last game. So he's got six <laughs> games to throw it's, 11 touchdowns to try yeah. to beat Dan Marino. I think, I, wouldn't it technically be like five games? Because he they played one last game. Yeah. So like if you did the stat like oh, properly. right. Without I the said, asterisk. Yeah. I yeah. still think he can do it. I still think it's 48 he, games that he has to try to beat it, right? That would mm-hmm. be so, yeah. Is. Yeah, so he has to do it by week our week seventeen. Wow, it's confusing. We got some time. We got a couple games. We have got time. He's got, yes. a, he's got a couple three touchdown games in him coming up here. I feel it. He's yeah, looking like I himself can feel again. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Keenan so, and Mike on the field together. Come on. If Go. we if we can only um, that would obviously be the big thing um, because this was just tweeted out from Mike Sando. Uh, Justin Herbert pass attempts with Mike Williams and Keenan Allen on the field. Back in 2020, 310. 2021, we saw 460. Come on. In 2022, we've only seen 27 pass attempts with both Mike Williams and Keenan Allen on the field. So Pretty pathetic. And he doesn't have a wide receiver in the top 30 for for receiving yards. Yet he's in but the yet, top five of passing. But yet he's the fifth quarterback in terms so of So what passing. does that tell you? He's There's just so spread out. He's got he's, no like go-to guy. He's got mm-hmm. no reliable guy. That's what it is. All right. There's no superstar on our in our receiving core right now. He's just throwing it around. Mm-hmm. And I, I think we saw big time what happened last week with Keenan when he was on the field. That changed a lot of shit, and he was able to you know do some Huge, great stuff. Yeah. And yeah. then when we get Mike and him on and Keenan on the field at the same time, dude, it's gonna Preach. it's gonna be back to what we kind of left off with last year in terms of what our passing attack was because we have basically. The same setup. We have a better tight end. Our offensive line hopefully isn't too beat up, but it's, it's little, pretty much the same thing right as last now. year. It's a yeah. little sketchy. Yeah. It's a little sketch. Um, so yeah, something to look forward to. If we can get both Keenan Allen and Mike Williams back out Come there, on. gonna be a world of difference. Big time. Um, and this was just announced uh Thursday. Uh player AFC defensive player of the month. They've been doing players of the weeks, and they gave player of the month defensive AFC. Derwin James. Folks. Atta boy. Atta boy, Derwin. Proud I think this buddy. is his first time getting it, uh, getting the accolade for player of the month for the AFC defensive side. He's had 37 tackles this month, two sacks, two forced fumbles, and an interception. I don't think there's anybody else in the league right now that has those kind of numbers. So no, not even close. Um, so pretty, pretty special. Obviously, the guy's a team captain, and thank God we locked him down. Uh, with that yeah. contract extension, I Big mean, time. obviously the guy is so special, and uh, he single-handedly kept us in the game last week with those two yeah. turnovers. Yeah, without those, they never punted in the first half. They would have had God knows how many points. Mm. 
Mm. Everybody. Mm. 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 Just take a minute mm. to be thankful mm. for what we do have. I mean, there's yeah. right. there's times where you're like, God, everybody's hurt and who who's even out there? But let's let's be thankful for the guys that we do have out there, yeah. like Derwin James. Um, and then AFC special teams player of the week. We've seen it go to Dustin Hopkins, and I think Taylor Bertolette actually might have gotten it once before, too. Or or is it Dicker the Kicker? Uh, did, I think Dicker got it. Yeah, okay. So Dicker the Kicker, Dustin Hopkins, and now J.K. Scott is the AFC special teams Let's player go. of the week. It's like uh, our best special teams we've had ever. Th- it's <laughs> ever. crazy. That means we have return touchdown, but that's I can't much remember all the last thing. time special teams in general got any kind of accolades for Seriously, the Chargers. It's like it's us. been years. Nope. So it's fantastic. Good to see a guy that we we didn't have last season. This is again something to be thankful for that we have a guy like J.K. Scott, a guy who's been on the injury report a couple times now and has fought through Playing it and come it, and yeah. played and he's kicking punts inside the 10. He's getting crazy hang time. Let's go, J.K. Go, baby. Um, And then more tweets. Uh, This came from NFL on CBS. Uh, Most touchdowns since the start of last season. (laughs) This is so awesome. Okay, so this is including last season. You've got Jonathan Taylor, Cooper Cup, James Conner at 23. Now, Jonathan Taylor, I think, had the most or tied for the most with Austin Eckler for the most touchdowns last year. Since last year, he's only got 23. At 24, you've got Joe Mixon. But then you've got nobody at 25, nobody 26, nobody 27, nobody 28, nobody 29, nobody 30, nobody 31. But at 32, you've got <laughs> Austin Eckler. Eight <coughs> more touchdowns it's than crazy. the next guy. That's not a little stat. That's what most people hope for in an entire season. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's a great year, eight touchdowns. Yeah. And that's and we're not even done the next yet. guy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this is this is like a lot of guys like full careers, 32 touchdowns. A lot of running backs entire career, like six to eight years of playing football is that that's like, God, I hope I can get there. Yeah. And he's just look at this. He's a monster. He's a if he doesn't get voted into the Pro Bowl. There's something wrong. Yeah. There's no, something it, it, wrong. If you're listening to this, go retweet the Austin Eckler Pro Bowl voting because yeah. it's a crime. It, it really is. If we don't get him in the Pro Bowl. Austin Eckler has to get into the Pro Bowl this year, and there's ways to do it. There's tweets you can all. I think there's the Pro Bowl website that you can go and vote on if you're not in Twitter. Uh, so make sure you go and get your votes in. And more than anybody, Austin Eckler has got to get in. That kid, it's a crime that he hasn't made it in the Pro Insane. Bowl yet. With all of our injuries and everything we've had to deal with on offense, it's. it's I think it's pretty safe to say that up to this point, he's pretty much our MVP on offense. What yeah. he's done and what he's produced to help this, this us stay in games. Wow. He basically that end of that last game, that was all him. He willed that yeah. last touchdown into existence. So we we just I'm so glad we have, I'm so glad we have him. Yeah. Um and then from actionnetwork.com, uh access social listings social listening data to analyze negative sentiment across all teams from the NFL, NBA, NHL. <laughs> MLB and MLS leagues between July of 2020 and July of 2021 to discover which teams are viewed the most negatively (laughs) online, at least by rate of negative posts. So we're talking across all spectrums of sports. Uh, These are, these are all football teams. So I don't even know if they're, if this is just the football yeah, I, teams, I, this is just the football teams. I just pulled this okay. one because the list was enormous. There was okay. like every team under the sun, but it gives, it. You, it gives you the idea of what this is. Well, you know, what I'm thankful to see is there's no, the Chargers don't make this list. They're, yeah, they're, they're further the down. 10. We're not in the top 10. Uh, but who, who is cresting, who is reigning on the top of the chart right now by a pretty far percentage? I mean, we're talking about the one and only Las almost, Vegas Raiders. They have almost double the negativity out in the world than the next, the second place team, which is yeah. the Bears. Yeah. The, well, and there's, and there's like, there's a few teams in between the, like, there's like a um, major league soccer team. There's like, there's a few teams in between the Raiders and the Bears. Like they are literally oh, really? the most hated team in all of sports. Wow. It's just a fact. And we all feel the same way, right? Well, now we've yeah. got the report to prove. Hey, we've these got are the facts. This is fat. science. Fat. This is this is math. Right? Yeah. I believe we don't in make science. up math. Yeah. No. no. So people most, hate the Raiders. The most negative sentiment 
for any team is the Las Vegas Raiders, fans. which includes their own, their own fans, fans. Probably make up a lot of that. They probably yeah. contribute to at least half of that, especially yeah. given their start this season. So, um, well, that actually that doesn't even include the start of this season. So I'm sure they're probably in the 20 percentile right now uh, for negative sentiments given their record so far. Um, and you just love to see it. Uh, well, let's look over at the injury report now. Obviously, something that we're all very concerned about as far as who's going to be making and who's not uh, for this Raider week. Uh, starting at the top, Nasir Adderley dealing with the thumb injury has gotten some limited practices in, so that's good to see. Come on, sissy. I'm sorry, but a thumb. Sissy. Well, I guess he was on the field with a, he had a big club on his, on his hand, so he might be clubbing it come Sunday. I I was a 13 year old playing pop Warner and broke my thumb and kept playing. I'm like, come on. I mean, come Come on. on, Kyle did it and he was eight. Come on. Yeah, I was. Chubby little 12 year old, you can do it. No, yeah, rub some dirt on it, take some Advil, and call me in the morning. That's right. No, I'm kidding. I hope it's it's hopeful that he's limited. Hopefully, he comes back because with with Devontae Adams and that over the top threat, it'd be nice to have him back there. Allow free Derwin up to get down in the box, right? Try to stop Josh Jacobs, right? Yeah, because our cornerbacks, Bryce Callahan, dealing with a groin injury, didn't practice Wednesday, but got a full practice in Thursday. Uh, Michael Davis still listed on there with the knee injury. Got two full practices in Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, Derwin James showing up on the list with a hip injury. Didn't practice Wednesday, but got full on Thursday. So we weren't expecting to see that from Derwin. This Uh, is the one that stresses me out. Yeah, Yeah, this is the one I'm having nightmares about. Yeah, Corey Lindsley is still in concussion protocol. Has not practiced Wednesday or Thursday. And I, I mean, I, I don't even know if there's enough time for him to go through the concrush, concussion protocol know, steps. Well, you don't know what phase he's at. Like, I feel like there's just so much unknown about what this concussion protocol, like what, I don't know. They, they just don't give any updates whatsoever. It's day to day, right? That's what he kind of is right now. I yeah. guess. Yeah. I mean, obviously there's different tests that they have to get through and show that they are no longer in the concussion protocol. So yeah, it's a little scary to see Corey Lindsley not getting any but practice in. It has, there has to be the chance that he gets out of it or else they would have already had to have declared him as out. So, like, oh, no, I guess by, and that's not till Friday. Yeah, well, no. I I think Friday, we'll Friday's tomorrow. usually yeah. when they give that, but, yeah. I mean, if there, if, the, if there has to be a certain amount of days between one step and the next and we're already past Come that. on, we're just thinking too much. We're talking too much, but we don't know anything. Just we can, please we know play, Corey. Please, 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 please Corey. Please We'd, play. We would really love it if you did. Please, um, please, please. Khalil Mack getting another rest day in on Wednesday. Got a full practice in Thursday. Got that grandpa vet day. Got to charge it. up for the Raiders, dude. He went. Yeah, they were starting to show highlights online of him playing against the Raiders in week one. And mm, like, yeah. you're watching the three sacks he had. But then I, I was watching it, and then I was also like, oh, yeah, those three sacks. Those Joey Bosa was also really close was to helping getting a sack. With that, so I'm just yeah. like, Khalil, rest as much as you need. We need you to turn it up to 11, yeah, please. Going to need you at a hundo, please. Yeah, please. Um, Kenneth Murray on the list with a wrist injury. Got two full practices in. Uh, Trey Pipkins also on this list, not getting any practice with the knee injury. Didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, Coach, Jamari... Coach said, Coach said with Trey that they're just really just letting him rest as long as possible. Like, oh, I, okay. I feel like he's going to play. Um, but Coach basically said on Monday that they're just like, he just he just needs to rest it. So they're going to, I think they're going to let him go. He's probably still in all the meetings, doing all the stuff, getting ready mentally. But he's just, just I, getting I think rehab. Just got to give him some time. Yeah. I think yeah. that's what it's it is. He's got to let the body do what the body do. Yeah. He will. Uh, let it do what it do, baby boo. <laughs> we'll do what it do. Uh, Jamari Sawyer on the list as well with the knee injury, but got two full practices in. And Mike Williams with the ankle injury, still not practicing. I did see that he was out there on the field. He was on the field on today. The That's huge. Yeah. That's yeah. at least something. So we're, we're in that point of the season where it's not like, all right, well, they need a full week to get ready to play. It's like, if you can get on the field on, on Wednesday, you know, on Thursday, Friday, you might, you know, you could Might at least still get a chance. Limited. There's still a chance he could play. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, like we said, folks, this is Raider Week. Raiders right now sitting third in the AFC West division with four and seven. Um who are the ones that they beat? They beat the last two, but they've won the last two. So they were they beat two the and Broncos. seven two weeks ago. Right. Beat the Broncos they took twice down. and the Seahawks. Broncos yeah, twice. So they, yeah, they beat the Seahawks. Wow. Yeah. Is that yeah. It? 
Yeah. Well, no, they have one more win in there somewhere. Where is it? You sneaky bastard. They oh, meet the, the Texans. Texans. The Texans. Texans, yeah. Yeah, so they, I mean, but they are coming off with two dubs, and they've figured out that Derek Carr's not the guy. So right now they're just force-feeding Josh Jacobs as much as they possibly can. Um, it's bad that they now have an identity because before they were trying to be a Derek Carr, like, driven automobile, which... We all want, we want the, give me the Derek Carr as many times as you can. Yeah. They figured out that Josh Jacobs is really, really good at football. And they decided that that's our identity, <laughs> um, which is not good. Um, the defense is still giving up a lot of points. Um, so I think, I think we should be able to score, especially if Mike Will plays. Um, it's just going to be a matter of if our defense can get, can toughen up and get stiff in the red zone and force field goals instead of touchdowns because they're going to run the ball. Well, the thing with Keenan, too, is he only played like a quarter of this game. And I saw a stat where he was like three for three for 47 yards. And did he have a, he didn't have a touchdown, but he was like going off yeah, just did. in the first. Yeah, he Keenan? got a touchdown. And, and a touchdown in that first oh, quarter. Oh, you mean, you mean no. against the Raiders? The, the very first time. game oh, oh. he played before he oh, had a no, huge no, layout score. He was like three for three, 47 yeah. yards, just torching people already. Yeah. So give him four quarters. I think it'll be good. And then the Jacobs thing, there's all this news about his calf strain. Like how right. he's been dealing with that all week and they're not really practicing him. So, you know, he it's probably gonna be, is going to play, but hopefully he's yeah. hobbled a little bit, you know. It's an unusual matchup because they're they're down, and remember, they're down Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro. So they're down right. two of their best targets in the passing game. Mm-hmm. Um, it really leaves Devontae Adams and Josh Jacobs. That's that's all they got right now. So um, if you can, I, I feel like this is a week where you sell out a little bit against the run you can bracket Devonte and everyone else. You kind of play man up and take your chances. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think I think the matchups are good. Our offensive line scares me against um, what they have in a pass rush, and I don't know. I think it's it's going to be tight. It's all it's always a close game. I just right. want Lindsley back so bad. I think that's a huge difference yeah. in terms of pass protection and 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 what we end up doing. He's just so important. I yeah. hope he can get back. Yeah, we're all we're all praying for for that to happen um all right well sadly we lost a a legend this week uh john hadel those that uh aren't aware john hadel late great charger player passed away in kansas at the ripe old age of 82 hell of a career um joined the american football league's san diego chargers in 1962 having decided to play with them over the Detroit Lions, who picked him in the first round of the NFL draft. Hato played 11 seasons for San Diego before stints with the Rams, Packers, and Oilers to close out his phenomenal career. Hato, who was a backup on the Chargers' 1963 AFL championship team, led the league in passing thrice in his career, which he concluded with 33,503 yards passing, 244 touchdown passes, over a thousand <coughs> yards rushing, uh, sixteen rushing scores, and an eighty-two seventy-five nine record as a starting QB. He was also the nineteen seventy-one NFL Man of the Year. Uh, Hadel ended his NFL playing career with the Oilers primarily as a backup, but would go on to be an NFL assistant for the Rams and Broncos before two seasons as the head coach of the USFL's Los Angeles Express. Yeah, it's really sad to see yeah. Charger legend go and. It's just sad. We've had two of these in the last, you know, six weeks. We lost a, a younger player, and then we we were losing uh, Hadel. So, yeah. rest in peace, dude. Rest Absolutely, in peace. yeah. A guy from the from the AFL Championship team, like that's that's huge. That was a that was a guy that seen basically the Chargers at their greatest. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah and he seen, chose the Chargers. Yes, he was drafted by back when the AFL and NFL were separated. The NFL, the Lions actually drafted him in the first. We drafted him in like the third, but we're like, hey, we'll play at quarterback. So he chose to be a charger, which is wow. unique, a unique part of history that nobody else gets that. When you're drafted, you're drafted. You don't get a choice. You're just coming, yeah. buckle up, buttercup, unless you're, I guess you're Eli Manning and <laughs> yeah. you throw a temper tantrum and your daddy steps in. And get in. what you want. Yeah. 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 <laughs> or you can play for the Rock of the XFL now. I guess that's the alternative version. That's the now. alternative. Yeah. Yeah. That's a possibility. So yeah, sad to see John Hadel go, yeah. but hell of a career and, um, and hell of a life. So, uh, Godspeed, John Hadel. Uh, and for those of you that don't know, I don't know how you couldn't, but we have a Patreon. 
Uh, if you, you go on over episode. every ding dang episode, <laughs> <Just a if>. <laughs> reminder, <laughs> uh, if you go to patreon.com slash charger chat, you can see some of the cool stuff we've got over there. We've got some exclusive videos, lots of laughs being had over there and, uh, you know, just good times in general. So yeah. if you want go on over to patreon.com slash charger chat, and if you're not feeling the vibes of Patreon, that's okay. You can go on over to chargerchat.com. Check out all the cool stuff we've got over there. T-shirts, hoodies, and stickers. You can chat it up with other Charger Chatteers in the members section and ask questions and ask bold fam. So go check out chargerchat.com. All right. Well, it's been a hot minute since we've visited this I'm side, uh, this segment. It is time for Coach's Corner. Let's see what Kyle's got for us this week. Great moments are born great opportunity. All comes down to today. You take this helmet and you put it right in his numbers, okay? I want to see nothing but snot bubbles in his nose. A lot of people want to blame coaches for a lot of things. Nobody puts <laughs> coaches in And corner. we shut them down because we can't. It's because I believed in you. And I wish I could say something that was classy and inspirational. But it just wouldn't be our style. Let's do it. That's right, gang. It is time for Coach's Corner. Coach, what are we doing this week? So I just wanted to look. I I overheard Gerald Everett's post game interview. He was talking about a stick flat concept, and he kind of threw it out like it was everyone should know what a stick flat concept is, and <laughs> just common knowledge that yeah, yeah, it's a stick flat, and oh, you don't do stick, stick flat? flats, and yeah, you don't know what the stick flat is. <laughs> um, and, and in my head, I was like, you know what? There's probably a lot of people that are like, I don't know what a stick flat is. And I don't know where to look it up. And I don't want to sound stupid asking what a stick flat concept is. I would be one of those people. Yeah. (laughs) So I decided it would be real easy to just pull it up here. I could walk, walk through it real quick and we could all learn a little something about football. Let's do it. boys. I I love it. I'm in. All right. So we, this is the two point conversion. This is the game on the line. Everyone is praising Lombardi now for the play call. And I thought it was a great play call. Um, This needs to be set up though. Um, So what's going to happen is a stick flat concept. That's just the routes on this side of the field. So these guys could also run a stick flat. So he could come in a stick route would just be to come and sit. And then he would run a flat. He would try to rub off of that route to try to get this defender to run into this defender. So you're basically running a rub concept. You're trying to make the defenders hit each other. You see it constantly in the NFL. A lot of the time you'll see pass interference called on the offense because this guy doesn't sell the route. He'll just run straight at the defender and pick it like it's basketball. Um, So the stick flat is he'll come in, run a stick. He'll kind of mess with it, give a couple steps and then get to the flat. And that's when you see the ball get out quick, go to the flat. Um, So that's what they're going to run down here. Keenan right here. His man is playing outside leverage, which is perfect for this route concept. If he's inside, it makes it harder to run that stick, but he's taking away the outside, which makes sense. Anytime a number one, so your number one right receiver is lined up this tight, this guy's assuming he's trying to get to the outside. So Keenan is just going to come. He's going to try to chip this defender as much as he can, just a little bit, and then come and sit right here. Now that's the stick part. And now Gerald Everett normally would run the flat. So this is what they, you want the defenders to assume he's trying to pick Gerald's going to stutter and then come to the flat. That's what they want you to think is happening. That's the stick flat concept. Now what they do, that's really good, which after watching it again, is they run Austin out here to the flat. Sometimes you just have to manipulate the eyes of the defender, the defender, the defender, the defender. (laughs) Defender. (laughs) So this guy, he's, He's not a robot, right? He's not going to always play everything perfectly. You can manipulate him just with the way that the other players are moving. Now, he might have assumed that it was going to be a stick flat, and so he tried to jump it. But also with Austin coming out here sprinting, this guy over here is manned, and he has to try to get over the top. He's probably thinking, oh, shoot, I got to jump this flat, and I can help with Eckler, which allows for this stick to come in here. He's going to bait it like it's out, and then boom, right back in. It's just there's nobody there. You look at that right now. Justin is looking at the way that these guys are playing it. He's playing outside shade. Perfect. That's what we want. This guy's pretty much head up to outside as well, which is exactly what you want. If he's outside playing the outside, he's trying to take away anything here. He's gonna. That means he's going to anticipate and try to jump. So I'll play it once through, and then I'll try to bring it back again so we can watch it. But watch. I'll stop it right on the stick. He's going to run the stick. 
Now you see this coming to the flat. This guy's stuck. The defender on on Gerald Everett is just kind of stuck in the water. He thought it was going to come outside or stuck in the mud, not stuck in the water. He thought it was going to come outside. And now he's like, oh, shoot. Gerald's just going to follow through this whole defender. So this guy doesn't have a man. He's just like a zone. He's playing his zone. But because Keenan is coming, that's going to hold him. And everything's wide open for Gerald to walk straight into the end zone untouched. Now, there's so much going on in this play. It's not just... Oh, Gerald Everett ran a slant and he caught the ball. There's all of that going on all at once to make that such an easy and successful play. You have to know the coverage. You got to know it's man to man, cover zero in this deep this this part of the um of the field. You have that correct leverage on the linebacker and on that DB. Now everything is working. You're gonna take up that whole defender with Keenan. So Keenan's not picking like normally on a stick flat. He would try to pick this defender. He's actually coming in here to pick the hole. That way he can't get over to help on Gerald Everett. You'll watch Keenan. He's going to get to the stick. He's going to start to float into that linebacker to make sure that he can't get over to Gerald Everett. It's just all of that going on at the same time with a perfect pass. Um, it was a great, it was a perfect play call in that situation against that defense. So it, it give Lombardi some props. Obviously, these guys had to execute it. As we've said so many times on this podcast, you can call the perfect play, but if the players don't execute, it's on them. That was a game-winning, perfect call, great execution. Wow. I think this is right about the time my heart rate was right at 130. So <laughs> I, I, in the ambulance, I was, we're on the way. This, I'm seeing this clearly now. It was a little blurry the last time I watched it. My vision was, something was wrong. That's been heart rate. <laughs> well, that, that's, that, so the, when you say get to the flat, the flat, is that the line of scrimmage or what is the, what is the flat? Yeah, so the flat would be anything outside the numbers. So you see the numbers on the field. Uh -huh. So the flat is like from the numbers. Every this is zone. So like this is the hook curl. Uh huh. Uh, let me fix that. The hook curl would be like anything from the line of scrimmage to ten yards, and then the the curl the flat would be out here. So if you're a flat defender, you're responsible for the routes outside of the numbers within twelve yards of the line of scrimmage. That's like the flat. So. This, this, the sit, he's going to get out here to the edge. So you're trying to get outside the numbers under 12 yards. That's the flat is what you okay. call it. Because then you have the, the hook, which is inside of that, anything from the line of scrimmage to 12 yards, but in here on the hash. So this is like the hook. This is the flat. I so see. It, okay. It's all just segmented. And on this side, you have the same thing. This is the hook. This is the flat. So it's all... It's all just segmented across. And that's why they, instead of saying that sometimes they'll, they just, that's how they work concepts. So that way, no matter where you're lined up, these guys could run it. These guys could run it. Eck could run it with him. He could come run a sit. He could run a flout. It's just a concept that any two wide receivers can run anywhere on the field. Wow. All right. The more yep. you know. The more you know, folks. So there you go. Coach's corner. Breaking it down for for all of us that don't know what what uh, hook and flat and Stick ladder and, and shoots. I are. just saw a whole <laughs> bunch of candy canes. Is all I saw. It looked awesome. Uh, <laughs> so, kind of hungry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well. <laughs> all right, gang. Well, now it's time to go on to the next segment. It is you know them, you love them. The Greg Experience. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Come on in, man. Kick your feet up. The oh. Gray experience. Hello there. Make yourself at home. Got some stuff to talk about, right? Moving on. Okay. New week. Right a week. You know what that means. Trolling galore. And I've really not seen very many active Raiders fans on the bird app. Huh, interesting. Well, I guess your team is arse and um, your coach looks like a complete buffoon. And your quarterback cries more than my wife watching rom-coms. Then, uh, there's not a whole lot to be all that proud or boisterous about. Anyway, CC gang, 
the biggest of salutes into the rest of the boat fan with his goody she got crank in texas and welcome to another edition of the crank experience what is there to say about last week other than the charges won was it pretty nope doesn't matter dub moving right along because this week is the week that we must focus on because remember eh, what i stressed just last week you gotta take these joints one game at a time and not look too far forward and there are some very real reasons to not overlook this raiders team uh number one strong running game and uh, i don't know if you noticed but they actually have the number one rusher in all the NFL and Josh Jacobs. And I know y'all saw those reports about the calf, but mm, that dude ain't missing this game unless he has some sort of crazy setback. I would expect him to play. And honestly, I don't think it really matters because regardless as to who's in the backfield, the Chargers are giving up buku yards. <clears throat> so I'm not really sure what, any, uh, what adjustments are gonna be made to the running game. I would love to see the 6-1 be rolled out again, but then the other side of that is having competent bodies in there in the interior to utilize that defensive front as long as you need. And the Chargers haven't had the best of luck keeping guys healthy. And um, you run into an issue of not having enough size on the interior. So mm, a couple dudes could be liabilities against a more strong power based run game, which is what the Raiders utilize. At the end of the day, what we have to pay attention to is the fact that the Raiders are 4-1 in games in which Josh Jacobs rushes for over 100 yards. They're not stupid. I mean, their coach is pretty dumb. Uh, but they've been watching the Chargers all year long. I mean, hell, they're division rivals. They know exactly what the deficiencies are on this defense. They have firsthand experience with it, and it's gotten progressively worse since Joey Bosa went down. They're attacking the edges. Last week was really wild on the edges, but the charges can be had in the trenches. So there has to be a concerted effort to figure out schematically how to at least contain the run, because I'm not exactly certain you're gonna shut Josh Jacobs down. Um, But on the flip side of that, where the charges are concerned offensively, Corey Lindsley has yet to practice, still in concussion protocol, which is scary. And, uh, yeah, wouldn't be shocked to see the Raiders blitz a little bit more than what they do normally. Because on the other side of that, you also have Trey Pipkins, who I don't believe has practiced yet this week. Foster Sarrell is going to be going up against uh, Max Crosby, which means a long day for the young one. And... Uh, the short passing game, quick stuff is just get ready for it. It's happening. Unless somehow, some way, the running game gets going, which I'm holding out hope that things get better. Uh, but yeah, it's probably going to be a whole lot more quick game stuff still. Um, not sure what's going to happen with Mike Will, but Josh Palmer has stepped up in recent weeks. And Keenan's out there, still got Everett. And of course, the straw that pretty much stirs the drink Herbert side Austin Eckler so moving the ball won't be a tall task it's just how consistently can they do it the Raiders aren't an amazing defense oh and how did that slip my mind it's the Jerry Tillery revenge game huh oh Jerry nothing would do my heart better than to see uh our backup center and Zion just road grade Tillery all game long, but nothing would hurt my heart more than him getting his grubby pigeon toed, uh, crabby patty hands on Justin Herbert. That can't happen. Don't, don't allow that to happen. That can't go down. We're not having any of that. So guys, Hey, be ready. Just, I don't care who the hell is in front of Herbert. Just don't let that happen. I, I would not be able to live down Jerry Tillery having a game against the Chargers. We want no parts of that. And so uh, on the other side of things, third phase of the game, special teams. Man, Coach Ficken has done a job. 
bravo to that man i've been giving him props here for weeks but seriously he's done a phenomenal job go look at the charges punt coverage look at where they stand jk scott ought to be a pro bowl punter at the end of this year but i wouldn't be surprised if he gets snubbed because it's popularity stuff well pro bowl but when we're talking about all pro players i think personally I'm not sure what they take into account there. If they care about hang time or if it's all about like distance or anything, whatever goes into that decision making, J.K. Scott needs to be up there. Ryan Ficken, again, doing a phenomenal job. And uh, how weird is it to have a really good special teams in the midst of all the other stuff that's going on? But really, should that be surprising? Because it's kind of that way with the Chargers. They have like phenomenal offense, not so great defense bottom of the barrel special teams or as one particular year i'm not going to go into detail about that name the year because it might trigger me but number one in offense number one in defense and like what dead last in the special teams so i guess it shouldn't be all that surprising but it's refreshing to have your special teams not be a cause of anxiety every time they step out on the field uh to have it be a strength and also probably a lot of the reason why you're not seeing Staley go for a bunch of fourth downs, which I could still question. But nonetheless, this is about the prowess of the special teams. And we're going to keep the focus on that. So, Coach Ficken, cheers to you, my man. Thank you for coming in and doing a bang up job. Hopefully you stick around for some time. But what am I looking for in this game? Eh... Uh, I don't know, man. I feel like it's going to be a weird one. Uh, it's a divisional game, so we know what that means. Both teams know each other very well, so it's probably going to be very tightly contested. Um, Chargers haven't been blowing anyone out, and I don't expect them to get beaten into the ground either. Um, I do pick Bolt Game to come out on Bolt Gang, sorry, to come out on top. I'm going to roll with score prediction 26. 26-21. That's what I'm going with. Chargers 26. Uh, the conjugal visit Cowboys 21. And from there, again, just get the ball rolling. Hopefully some guys get back and start getting healthy. Joey Bosa seems like he's probably going to be on the shelf for a little while longer from all indications. Coach didn't seem super confident about him coming back anytime soon. But look, honestly, if the charges aren't or, you know, fall out of contention at some point within the next few weeks, I wouldn't be surprised if Joey doesn't come back at all. But they can pull it together. You can get him back. Babyface bully for a playoff run. And that's a team that I don't think anyone wants to see. They're going to have to fight, scrap, and survive the next few weeks and win at least one of the games that not everyone's expecting them to win, whether that be against the Titans or against... Oh, how did I get this far without mentioning that Dolphins game getting flexed? It's a Sunday night football, man. Week 14. I've said this over and over again. This is one hell of a year for the Chargers to be popular. And uh, the NFL showing love. Games getting moved around. We know what that's about. It's primetime Herbo. The guy with the lovely locks. Yeah, he draws a crowd. The whole Tua and Herbert thing, we know what that's about. But guys, y'all all know why I want the Chargers to win this game. It's because I want the great pleasure of trolling bargain Ben Terry Crews, better known to you guys as Emmanuel Wajo. Hooey. He wants no parts of this. It's going to be a bad, bad experience for him on social media if the Chargers pull this out. Not only if they pull it out, but if Herbert outplays to it. You know he's not going to go on his show and give Herbert any real props. He's going to find every excuse he can come up with to say somehow how Tua played better or if he was at a disadvantage or something stupid. But whatever, I don't care. Whatever losers do. I just need the opportunity to make this man's life a living hell. It could just be me. No one else wants to join in. That's fine. I'll do enough trolling for the lot of us. But please, God, grant me this opportunity. Because uh, nothing would make me happier. 
But y'all, that's it for me, man. Until the next one, y'all know who it is. It's Mr. Bolt Gang. Or Do Not Bang, a.k.a. T-O-P underscore F-L-Y-T-3 over on Twitter. You can catch me on my YouTube page at the Flight Deck Charger to the Game. Uh, get a post-game reaction going after uh, the matchup against the Raiders on Sunday. I'll try to get that out on Sunday. I want to keep it fresh and uh, raw. And I want the emotions to seethe through. That might not be such a good thing if the Chargers don't win. But... It's going to be genuine regardless. So, again, until next time, I'll catch y'all later. Y'all take it easy. Stay bolted up. And, uh, K, okay. love you. Bye. Well, shoot, Craig. Thank you for reminding us. We have we didn't even talk about I, the Miami game. It Bozos. happened right after we recorded the last episode. So, it just became like this news that I've celebrated. It was like it's days. so old. Yeah. It's last old week's news. news. Yeah. <laughs> but how amazing is it that we get another primetime game? We have three in five weeks. It's yeah. insane. Yeah, half of the game, half of the remaining games. We got six more games. Three of them are in prime time. It's crazy. Can you can you blame them? Like so many are ending up in duds, but ours never do. No, we're three, well, losing by three points to the Chiefs and the and the Forty ers Two like top of you know amazing well, and then we teams. Beat, so. We beat the Broncos in overtime in our other prime time game. Yeah. Right. You know, it was like constant. Just we we will put on a show if you put us under the lights. Yeah, that's it's just crazy. And we flexed out the Chiefs. And the Broncos, which is yeah. pretty sweet. Well, I, I mean, people are tired of the Broncos primetime games. Those games yeah, are just not come on, fun to watch joke. anymore. No, like, no, you don't want to watch that's bad football. And it, it is interesting to think about. Like, this is a year where the Chargers are very banged up, more so than usual. We and actually, we legitimately are the most banged up team in the NFL right now. It's science, and yet science. we're getting flexed into primetime games. That's insane. It's not, it's not, it's not Russell Wilson over. time. No. It's not, not Russell Wilson time. <laughs> as he Russell says Wilson to himself time. on the sideline. I couldn't believe that. <laughs> There's some weird stories about him, dude. I think <laughs> he's a, a weird sociopath. Guy, yeah, he's, he's a, a psychopath. Yeah. yeah. He's crazy. They don't and they like, like it when you say that. <laughs> and they did it. I, I saw the story where he was uh, had a birthday party and only half the team showed up. It's like uh, draft day all over again. It is. You don't want that That's quarterback. That's draft day right you don't there. Want, you don't want that quarterback. Mm. Well... Awesome. Well, uh, Craig, uh, thank you again for giving us an awesome Craig experience. Yeah. And uh, and we love that. The uh, what was it? The con, the con, conjugal, conjugal visit, visit, the conjugal cowboys. visit cowboys. That's the episode title. It's too that fun. Is, That's exactly what they are. That Spot is on. Spot perfect. On. Spot on. Um, tip top. Spot on. <laughs> tip, top. tip top cheerio. Um, all right, folks. Well, that's about it for this episode. But before we go, we have some bolt predictions to make. What are we feeling? I'll go first. Um, I have us the Chargers winning this in a close game, but I think we 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 comfortably win at the end of the game. I have us winning thirty one to twenty three. Jesus, um, and I have n- what? It's got stuff going first. It, it looks like uh, I'm just copying you. <laughs> and then I also have our offense allowing no sacks to the Raiders defense. Holy Justin shit! Justin Herbert like stays clean. 31-23. Throws 500 check downs. Yikes. Let's ride. Wow. That's right. I love it. That is bold. <laughs> All right, Kevin, 31-23? No, at 31-24. <laughs> way, way to spice things up. Yeah, Kevin. that's what I had in my brain. I think we're it's a bit, one of the bigger wins we've had so far this season. Um, all of our games have been with three to five points. That's how we win. One Let's by one it. point last week. Yeah. So I think we we see this team. We know this team. We play well against these these teams. Like, like, that's what Coach Daly just knows how to play the Raiders and knows how to play the Chiefs. So um, I think our defense is going to be better than they were last game. I don't think we're going to have that first quarter that, that, that we don't slow start. I don't think we're going to slow start against the Raiders. I just don't think so. So I think we'll do it. And I think uh, Herbert's going to Herbert's going to have a day. He's going to have over 350 to on this game. Holy heck. Yeah. 350, their their nice. secondary is trash, trash, trash. Um, and I think there's going to be a lot of yards <laughs> after catch and he's going to have a he's going to have a game. Wow. Excellent. Okay. Um, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to say 28, 28, 17. Oh, Big blow comfy up. win. That's I'm going to say, I'm going to say comfy win because my a bolt- slipper win. You put your feet in nice yeah, and comfy. Put your comfy pants <laughs> on. Slipper put those win. Thanksgiving pants on. 28, 17. And 
My bold prediction is that the Chargers hold Devontae Adams to zero touchdowns. Mm. I like it. That'd be great. Mm, I like I like mm. all of it. Mm. Mm. Give me more of that. Mm. Give me, give me, <laughs> give me. Um, all right. Well, there you go, folks. Bolt predictions in the books. Next on deck is going to be Sunday against the Raiders. Raider week, folks. I hope you folks are ready. Come on. Bring the trash talk on Twitter. I think it's well deserved at this point. Um, and uh, and I think and, that's going to do it. And for Let's, everyone going to the game, be safe, be yes, loud. Please. Let's show up. Let's, be smart. Let's, hope, stay in, let's, let's make it a whole power field in advantage. numbers. Stay with other Charger fans. Yes. We got this. Yes. Um, be all safe, right. broads. Yes. Protect the broads. Yeah, at protect all the broads. At all costs. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, that's going to do it for us here at Charger Chat, folks. Don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad, any place. Okay, love you, bye. Okay, love you, bye. I love you, bye. <laughs> <laughs>